Okay, so we are making this video for no particular reason, because there obviously isn't anything that we can talk about that relates to this current topic. Now, you know, I'm kind of joking here, I'm being tongue-in-cheek, but this is kind of one of those things that I didn't realize was there until I saw a post on Reddit that just kind of threw everything in our faces, and when I saw the Reddit post, I was like, oh my goodness, that's a discussion right there. Like, that in itself is good enough to make a full-on commentary about, because right now the Montreal Canadiens are down 3-0 to the Tampa Bay Lightning, and I'm not going to say that they're going to come back and win. I don't know if anybody out there legitimately believes that it's going to happen. If you put money on it, hey, you're a betting man, woman, whatever it is you choose to identify yourself as, respect. But I'm personally not in your same boat. So... When it comes to the Habs and the 3 nothing comeback, obviously we know, oh, it's only been done in the NHL four times in history, in the Stanley Cup Finals a few decades ago, and then you have the recent ones too. The Islanders in the 70s, the Flyers in 2010, and then you have the LA Kings. Those are the only times it happens, right? Well, those are indeed the only times the 3 nothing comeback has been successfully defeated in the NHL. It's been unsuccessfully defeated, almost defeated, tied, but eventually lost five times in NHL history. The Rangers were down 3-0 to the Bruins in 1939. They won three straight to tie it, but then the Bruins won in Game 7. The 1945 Stanley Cup Finals were weird because it was kind of a flip of what happened in 1942, where Toronto came back and won the Stanley Cup after being down 3-0 in the series to the Red Wings. This time, the Wings were down 3-0 in the series. They won three straight, almost pulling the same Toronto Magic from three years ago, but then they lost in Game 7. In 1975, after the New York Islanders defeated the Pittsburgh Penguins, reverse sweeping them, 4-3, Game 7, they ended up going down 3 nothing again to the Philadelphia Flyers. They won three straight, and then they lost in Game 7. So they almost pulled it off twice, that 75 Islanders team in a row. And then in 2011, we had two situations of this happening. Chicago lost three straight to Vancouver, won three straight to tie it, but then they lost in Game 7 overtime because Alex Burrows, baby. Oh man, big memories over there for me as a Canucks fan. And in the next round, you had yourselves the Red Wings, who almost did the same thing. After the San Jose Sharks had a 3-0 lead there, Pavel Datsuk and the Wings came back, won three straight, but then they lost in Game 7. So even though the NHL has only had four successful reverse sweeps, we have had five extra situations where it was almost close to happening. However, that is not it, because outside of the NHL, there are still hockey leagues out there that follow the format of best four out of seven matchups in four round playoff runs. And that's what we're going to be talking about here today, because when it comes to the Montreal Canadiens being down 3-0 to the Lightning, it's honestly kind of strange, but a few of the players on this team have experience coming back against this. Let's go in chronological order backwards. So let's go back to 2019, and I'll take you to the OHL over here, the Ontario Hockey League. It's their playoff run going on over here. We're focusing on the Guelph Storm. This is a team that had a really dominant first round. They destroyed the Kitchener Rangers. 4-0 was the series over there. They won each of their games 4-2, 7-0, 6-3, and 5-1. So an absolute demolition of the Rangers by the storm over here, and they booked their ticket to the second round. In the second round, they played off against the London Knights, who were also coming off of a first round sweep as that team swept the Windsor Spitfires. The first three games of round number two saw the Knights take a 3-0 series lead. They had a 3-2 win in game one, a 7-0 win in game two, and they won game three 7-4. But guess what happens next? The Guelph Storm come back and they take a 4-3 lead in Game 4, bringing the series to 3-1. Nick Suzuki had a goal and two assists in this game. The next game, Game number 5, the Guelph Storm limit the Knights to only one goal, and they score three themselves. This time, it's Nick Suzuki getting two goals. Really clutch right there, the series is now 3-2 for the London Knights. You wait until the next night, and all of a sudden, the Guelph Storm take Game 6 with a score of 5-3. to three. Nick Suzuki doesn't slow down. He gets himself a goal and two assists in this game. And then we have Game 7, where the Guelph Storm come back, and they take the series win 6-3 to three in Game number 7. Nick Suzuki comes out here with, yet again, a goal and two assists. So... 
the London Knights, who are absolutely phenomenal in this year of OHL play. A lot of people were kind of comparing them to the Tampa Bay Lightning in a way, because this is a team that was just so stacked and had so many good players, and they did all this stuff, that all of a sudden they have a 3-0 lead in the series, the Guelph Storm come back. In Game 7, they actually had a 3-1 lead at one point, and then the Guelph Storm got back on the board because Suzuki got two points to tie it, and then Isaac Ratcliffe came out and got the game-winning goal. So after his team goes down 3 0, Nick Suzuki comes alive for 11 points in four games as the team comes back and storms themselves over to a series victory. They ended up winning the championship that year. Now, going back even further, 2014. We already spoke about this, but hey, in 2014, in the first round, the LA Kings were down 3 0 to the San Jose Sharks, and then they pulled off the reverse sweep quite successfully, too. The Sharks breezed their way in Game 3 overtime to a 3 0 series lead, and I remember thinking to myself watching this live back when it happened man, the Sharks really came to play. They're gonna have themselves a pretty good time in the second round when they play Anaheim or whoever it's gonna be. Good on them. But then, all of a sudden, game number four, 6-3 LA, Tyler Toffoli gets a goal and an assist. Okay, it's now 3-1, to one. it's within two, they still have the lead here, they still have a chance to win this one. Game number five comes along here. All of a sudden, a 3-0 shutout for the Kings, and Tyler Toffoli gets yet another goal. Okay, well now we have a two-game series, it's 3-2 to two, San Jose. Surely, they're not going to lose in Game 6, right? Yeah, they did. LA takes Game 6 4-1, and Game 7 comes around here, and it's 5-1 LA. Tyler Toffoli gets himself a goal as well. So Toffoli, after his team goes down 3-0 to the San Jose Sharks, he steps up with four points in the four remaining games played to eliminate the San Jose Sharks and end up reverse sweeping the team. Then they won the cup that year, and Tyler Toffoli had his name engraved on Lord Stanley's Grail. But wait, that's not all. Because if you go back even further, let's go over to 2011-2012 in the QMJHL, where the Halifax Mooseheads played the Quebec Remparts in the second round of the playoffs. This is significant because you had a similar story to the Guelph Storm Nick Suzuki stuff with the London Knights seven years later. Both teams, the Quebec Remparts and the Halifax Mooseheads, had swept their first round opponents. Quebec swept Drummondville and Halifax swept Moncton. They played in the second round, and guess what? The Quebec Remparts ended up taking a 3-0 series lead against a Halifax Mooseheads team that was coached by Dominique Ducharme. Okay, okay, it's 3-0, and all of a sudden it's looking like, okay, the Quebec Remparts are going to take this one. They'd been scoring a boatload of goals earlier on in the series. They had wins of 4-2, 5-3, and 4-3 to kick things off in the series, but then Game 4 comes along. And the Halifax Mooseheads, hey, they only allow one goal, but they score two. It's Jonathan Drouin here who gets himself a goal, and then Cameron Critchlow gets himself the game winner. Game number five comes along here. It's a back-and-forth scoring fest between the Mooseheads and the Remparts, and Jonathan Drouin gets two assists as the Dominique Ducharme-led Mooseheads win 3-2. Okay, now the series is also 3-2. Game 6 comes along, and Halifax completely opens the gates. A 5-2 win against the Quebec Ramparts. Drouin gets 4 points! 2 goals, 2 assists. My goodness, this man came out here with a mission. The series is now tied, and we go to Game 7 back in Quebec where the Halifax Mooseheads end up taking it 5-4. to four. It's a quick 2-0 lead here for the Remparts to kick off things in the first two periods, but then Jonathan Drouin and the rest of the crew come alive. Four goals from Cameron Critchlow, Drouin gets a goal and two assists, and eventually the Mooseheads take it off of Dominic Ducharme's coaching and Drouin's clutch ability to step up in big moments. We spoke about how Nick Suzuki had 11 points in four games after being down down 3 0 to the London Knights and helping the Guelph Storm win. Tyler Toffoli was a point per game after being down to the Sharks and helping the Kings win in the first round. Well, Jonathan Drouin had 10 points in four games in the queue after his team was down to Quebec 3 0, eventually winning that series as well. Dominic Ducharme was the head coach there, and the Montreal Canadiens have some of these names on their roster today. Now, I'm not going to say this guarantees anything, it absolutely does not, but just seeing the coincidence here, the fact that Suzuki has come back from down 3 0 in a series, Tyler Toffoli 
did it in the Stanley Cup playoffs in a year where they ended up winning. Dominic Ducharme coached a team out of a 3-0 deficit as well, not to mention the fact that Druen was on that team. It's just so weird, dude. Again, it doesn't guarantee anything, but boy, is it fun to have. So talk to me in the comments what you think about this entire thing over here. Obviously, it's just coincidence, you know, I'm not going to guarantee anything. We're going to be streaming for Montreal-Tampa later today. I would not be surprised if Tampa ends up winning the Cup in four. But I thought it would have been cool to take a look at the previous times the 3 to nothing lead in the playoffs has ultimately failed. So talk to me in the comments what you think I'd be enjoyed. This video is Ash Wilson 99. And... Bye.